Hi, I'm Poppy. My practice is mainly drawing based, creating zines to document thoughts and narratives, with an emphasis on the everyday, mundane and overlooked. I chose to run my workshop Drawing by Cues to encourage the artists to be imaginative and create art around an unfamiliar subject matter. The artists each provide a prompt or cue for another artist to interpret through drawing. I posted off A4 card and black and red fine liner pens and felt tips to limit the media and colours available. This made the drawings seem more uniform, working together well as a collaborative workshop, while also including red for tomato ketchup. 1. Each artist anonymously gives me a prompt, such as a sentence, phrase or word. These can be totally random. 2. The prompt is then given anonymously to another artist. 3. The artist makes work inspired by the prompt. 4. Work is sent back and displayed. 5. The participants title another artist piece, guessing what the artist has depicted. This will then be displayed by the artwork as well. The aims of my workshop are to encourage artists to explore different ways of drawing and to create drawings depicting another artist's thoughts, experiences or surroundings. The artists also work together to form a collaborative body of work. The outcomes of this exhibition are all of the A4 drawings. The original prompts and new titles are also all displayed by the artwork and these together form the collaborative body of work. James Hewins How to throw a vase I'm a sculptor and digital artist interested in dystopian futures and posthumanism. I started using a potter's wheel because I've always wanted to try it and I wanted to make vases for my plants. Activity I'd like to offer people the opportunity to experience using a potter's wheel. I plan to demonstrate how to make a vase on the wheel then assist and inform the participants through the process. Aims. Learn to deal with failure. Create at least one vase shape per participant. Outcomes of the activity. Individual outcomes of vases. If people want to do their own thing with the wheel that's fine. How to throw a vase. The clay needs to be wedged before being put onto the wheel. This next process is called coning up and coning down which is done to center the clay on the wheel. After centering begin to push down and pull out the clay. After this stage is called pulling which begins the forming of the vessel shape. After the tubular vessel is at a good height and wall thickness then begin to shape the belly of the vase first, then the feet, then the neck. The activity that I proposed to the Ripe Tomatoes was semi-instructional, um, whereby each artist worked within an allocated time frame of up to three days each, responding to an audio prompt given by the artist before them that loosely described their own outcome. Mariam was our first artist to create work, and I said to her, you can create anything that you want in any medium that you want, um, so long as it's within the three-day time frame that I give you, and you will then have to record a voice memo that describes what that piece of work is in a very loose, ambiguous way. Iconic Chinese, glorious, underrated, proper tasty, seasoned, anti-vegan. That voice memo then got put, passed on to the next artist and she was to then create a piece of work that, that responded to that voice memo. Cardboard, red, and so on and so on. The aims of this activity was to accumulate uh, various ancestral works. Salty, yellow, bloody. That kind of illustrated the different ways in which we respond to and deal with information, especially in moments of limitation. Bloody, tragedy, yellow, war. Um, it also encouraged each artist's preferred method of creation to shine through in their responses. Political, helpless, exposed, violent. 
rather than kind of telling them exactly how they were supposed to make work and what that work was supposed to be. And again, just to outline how we adapt and thrive in limitation and unprecedented situations. Um, And this was an extension on reflecting on the pandemic and how artists have had to cope under these circumstances. Um, And lastly, just to acknowledge and celebrate that subjectivity is rooted in all creative outcomes. No one artist is a carbon copy of the other. And I strongly believe that um, subjectivity is what drives good artwork. My practice is a responsive, reactive and interventionist, inspired by institutional critique approaches. It is highly site-specific in that it derives meaning from and fosters a deeper dialogue around the context of its own site of making. For example, at art school, my work was incredibly informed by the role, function and purpose of the art school itself. My practice is interdisciplinary and probably sits best within the expanded field of drawing. Mixed media include drawing, painting, writing, research and publication making, for example zines, which culminate in the form of immersive installations deliberately invoking a range of visual languages and written registers. Think structured chaos. Situated in the contemporary context of fake news, post-truth and alt-fact, Workshop participants will develop fictional narratives around tomato ketchup to generate work in an interdisciplinary expanded field and blur the lines between fact, fiction, truth and myth. Is ketchup in fact genetically modified alien blood pumped by the gallon from Area 51 and or Roswell, New Mexico? The factories far and wide, duly bottled for mass human consumption? I am a multimedia artist and my practice is based around quality and social change. Through my work, I aim to bring voices to those who may not be heard and to create discourse and conversations among viewers. I make work responding to a focused topic rather than specialising in one medium, meaning my work can be a variety of things, including sewing, painting and sculpture. For my workshop activity, I really wanted to bring the group together and to make a safe space to create conversations of what it's like for each of us to be an artist, celebrating our commonalities and our differences. As artists who graduated in the time of the pandemic and where the arts were being referred to as non-essential, I wanted to strengthen our bond and demonstrate how artists are all uniquely important. The workshop was based on Zoom to make it accessible and each artist was asked to have a small square of fabric ready for the workshop. The fabric then became the canvas and artists were asked to create anything on this but it had to be informed by our conversations and the question What does it mean to be an artist? The aims of the workshop was to explore topics through conversations, our commonalities and differences, and to strengthen our bond through conversation. To make a collaborative outcome that brought us together and connects us as one while showing how unique we all are. For the final outcome, I hand sewed all our fabric squares into one bigger piece. The reason I chose fabric was the active time I spent sewing them together represented us coming together in conversation. Hi, 
My name is Oliver Gaspar. I'm doing the Kultur Masti workshop uh, in collaboration with Space Arts. I'm currently here in Budapest, which where we're organizing the Kultur Masti exhibition, which shares very of the same values as Space Arts does and uh, RIPE does. Work for the workshop is a uh, is a stream about uh, artworks, so like streaming artworks between the two exhibitions. The subject of the uh, stream is performance and drag as well, and because of that it will be like a performative stream. So like when you're doing the stream you're not the art, I mean you're still the artist, but you're like this character who's like uh, the host of the stream, like in news reports or or in any, it can be like very caricature-ish. Kultur Masti is more like the ex exhibition itself is more performative. I love your outfit. The whole exhibition is more trying to make a caricature of exhibitions. Here in Hungary exhibitions are not like that at all, but that's still how people think about it. The subject of our, of our workshop is, is the satirization of events and also how to involve uh, more people and how to collaborate with more people locally. But yeah, I think overall that the two exhibitions share very much the same values and I'm so happy that they are happening at the same time as well. Part of the workshops like are still ongoing. We had, so we're gonna have more workshops after the exhibitions have finished because we want to continue uh, the work. I think it's like very important to go back and reflect on the artwork which is why we decided to make the rest of the workshop like a second workshop after the exhibition.